this is our last stop. Even if it means the point of death, the even if someone puts a gun to my head and tells me, divorce your wife or else you will die, I would rather let the person kill me than me to divorce. Welcome back to another video and another episode on Before I Got Married. Um, today's episode conversation seems to be quite interesting. And I'm sure you'll want to know how it will turn out. Stick to the end of this video and then be inspired and be encouraged. Welcome to Before I Got Married. Thank you. <laughs> Please introduce yourself to um, My name is Karija Gabriel. Um, I'm a pastor, swimming instructor spoken word artists and husband to Esther Gwebio. <laughs> He's proud. Husband to Esther Gwebio. How has it been so far being married? Uh, it's been good. There's been a little bit of ups and downs, but mm. so far we are good. Wow. Good to hear that. Yeah. Good to hear that. Now tell us a little bit about um, before you got married. Because that's the whole mm -mm. Uh, reason why we are here today. How was it for you before you got married? How was it for me? Okay, before I got married, I I would say I was desperate. Desperate for what? Desperate to find someone. So it made me enter into relationships very rush. Whenever someone showed me a little bit of affection, I'm like, okay, Charlie, this is the person. So you mean like before you even met Yeah, before wife? I met my wife. Whenever someone showed me a little bit of affection, a little bit of um attention like okay this is the person my now wife or well, i would say she was very closed um like closeted she wasn't one to go out she was very closeted so there are a lot of things that she had never eaten before but, but she's she's your wife now she's my wife now okay so like since she's your wife now uh, you guys got married yeah. and all of that happened um, did you know anything about marriage? No, I didn't. I, I really did not have you, have. you have mother and father. I have a mother and father, but my mom and dad separated a long time ago. Mm. Did you grow up with both of them? No, I grew up on my with my dad's aunt. Wow. It was my dad's aunt who took care of me from the age, I think, two years. All the way till you got married. All the way till I got married, but she passed. A year, um, a year before, a few months before, right. I got I got married. She passed in May. Uh, yeah, May twenty twenty one. I'm sure you would have wished. Yeah, I, I was. I really wish she was around because that was one of the that was one of her biggest um, dreams for me. That she wanted to she wanted to see me get married, yeah. and at least give her some great grandchildren before. So, so I really did not have an idea of what, of how a proper marriage yeah. worked. Yeah. Or how, I mean, yes, your, your mother and your father were not together. No, nah, so they were not together. No so sign you the, don't to uh, yeah, and and the f and the home, the house in which I grew up in was um, a family house. It was a family house, and almost all of none of my aunties except for one is. It's with your husband. Her husband. So I would say I, I really did not have the uh, ideal background to really understand what marriage was or what what constituted what constituted pardon me what constituted um, a proper marriage mm. or, uh, or what marriage looked like. Mm. I didn't really have um, an archetype of Okay, this is this is what a husband and wife are like in a in a marriage. This is how the the wife relates to the husband. This is how mm -hmm. the husband relates to to the wife. I really did not have that that uh, that archetype mm -hmm. for me to to follow mm -hmm. follow after. So I would say before I met my wife, I really did not understand. I really did not know what um, marriage really entailed. Did, did, I, would you be able to say that you even you even knew what love meant? Love, <laughs> because for, like yeah, for a very long time I struggled with with the idea of love. 
for a very long time I struggled I struggled with with that idea I did not really understand what it meant to to love to love someone maybe you I may think that I knew what love meant but I really did not know what it really meant mm. to love to love someone and be loved by by someone it was for a long time uh, throughout my childhood I have always lived my life to please people because I felt like if I please you you will love me mm. if I'm able to if I'm able to please you mm. you will love me mm. so I believe uh, that that translated into almost all the relationships that I was in I was always looking to to please the person because if I please you so I will go out of my way to do to put myself even if it means that I have to travel at midnight wow even so if actually like you are doing all the stuff yes I was doing I would I would do anything because Charlie that's what I thought if I'm able to make you happy then you love me if I make you happy you will love me mm. so I will, I will literally do anything and everything to make you happy this might sound some way though but like all the what you're just saying right now, the sacrifices yeah. you made for people did any, any of them show up for you when you were getting married wow did that happen it was just a few people it took it took a long time for me to realize actually i don't have to i don't have to kill myself for people mm. i don't have to kill myself for anyone I don't have to kill myself for anyone. I have to, in as much as I should be there for people when they are in need, I should be there for people when, when they need support. I should not go out of my way. I should not go out of my way, break my back, mm. just, just to make an individual happy. There are people, there were a few people that came through for me. But that, that, does that not scare you at all? I've and and when I'm talking about scaring or being, how how does it feel growing up in a home where nobody is really married? Because mm. your dad and your mom's own was not even a good yeah. example for you. There was only one auntie who yeah. was living in the house who seemed to she, be she 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 scrapped. She's not in the house. She's not in the house. She's not in the house. She's in she's in London now with her. She's been she stayed in London. Um, I would say almost. All her adult life, she had all her children. Did, did she come through for you for your wedding? Yeah, yeah, she came through for me. She, okay. she came through for me. She was even at the wedding um, on the day of. She was even there. Okay. At, at the church okay. on that day. So, of all this experience, yeah, were you not afraid for getting married? No, I wasn't. You sure? Like you are bringing somebody's daughter to. Yeah, I know. That. <laughs> I know, but I, I, I wasn't. Because I told myself, before I got married, I told myself other people's experience should not define me. Mm. What my dad experienced, what my mom experienced, what my aunties experienced, whoever, whatever anyone experienced, it, it's their experience. It does not necessarily have to be my experience. Because Individually, we are we are different. We are, we we all have different journeys. We all have different paths we are taking. Mm. So, if they had that experience, why should I be afraid that I was going to experience the same thing? Mm. My story is different from theirs. My story is different from theirs. So, I I I remember I remember telling my wife that no matter what. Divorce is never it's never going to be an option between us. No matter what we would we are I told her you and I this is our last stop. This is our last stop. Even if it means the point of death, even if someone puts a gun to my head and tells me divorce your wife or else you will die, I would rather let the person kill me than me to divorce. Mm. Because the moment I do that, it begins a paradigm it begins uh, just an, uh, a, a rotating door if I divorce my wife the chances of me continuing on that same path will be high will be high yeah, very, very. 
and if I have children, the chances of them repeating my mistake mm. will be will be high. Will be high. Because Charlie, hi, and someone has to stop it. Someone has to stop that cycle. So you believe so, you believe you, you are the one. So I believe even if I do not believe that I'm the one, I must be the one to stop that cycle mm. from repeating from repeating itself. Even if I even if I must die to stop that cycle cycle from repeating, I'll have to do it. Because it has really it has really not left a good example for the younger generations from the generation that came after my, my dad's my dad's generation. And I don't want it to seem lower to the generation that comes after. There must be there must always be someone that stands and say, I'm taking a stand. This line I'm, I'm, I'm putting my foot down. I am, this line is where it stops. Mm -hmm. this, this is where it ends. Even the, even the sea, the sea knows its limits. Absolutely. Even the sea knows that when I come to the shore, when I get to this point, I am not supposed to go beyond yeah. okay. this point. Yeah. I am that sure. I believe that I am that sure that the sea, the sea is coming to, and when it gets to that shore, it must end there and go back to where it, it originated from. Mm 